Please join me in the invitational. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something. And to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning. A step along the way. Like laborers in a large vineyard, we try our best to do our part. We know that the challenges facing our community and world are bigger than one person can fix. But we also know there are opportunities for every person to be engaged, to do something. God, please bless us with the faith and the tenacity to continue what we are doing and to do it well. We are grateful for this family of faith we are grateful for the encouragement and grace we receive from one another. We are most grateful for the blessings you pour out upon each one of us. Please open our eyes to see the changes we can make and the progress we can obtain if we work together. For in Romans 8:28, we are assured and know that God being a partner of our labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God. We are therefore called according to his design and purpose. And now trusting that with God anything is possible, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Creator, Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to New England Congregational Church on this beautiful fall morning. It is truly good to be together with you in this place. A very special welcome to those who are guests among us. Please take a moment to sign the friendship register located in your pew before passing it to your neighbors. Whether you're joining us in person or online, we welcome you. Please stay after worship and join us in the narthex for coffee and conversation. A special word of welcome to Cam Shannon Cameron joining us from the Interfaith Food Pantry will be sharing with us a little bit later in the service. Please take a moment to read through the announcements in your bulletin. Of special note, the Orion Ensemble will be back in New England Church for a new season beginning tonight at 7 p.m. The concert will feature works of Brahms and Mozart. Tickets can be purchased online or at the door. We're looking for a few people to volunteer in our nursery to assist our paid attendants in caring for babies and toddlers. If you're willing to assist, please contact Desiree Guzman. Desiree, give us a wave. She's the person to talk with. Next Sunday, in addition to our services at 8.30 and 10 a.m., we invite you to bring your furry or scaly friends and join us for the annual celebration of blessing the animals. This special service will take place in the garden on the South Lawn at 3 p.m. Refreshments will follow and all species are welcome. <laughs> The next couple of weeks, New England Church will be participating in the Neighbors in Need offering of the United Church of Christ. These funds support the Council for American Indian Ministry and the UCC's Justice and Witness Ministries. To donate, please use the envelopes in the box in the narthex or donate through our website. And now remember that no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of faith and life, you are very welcome in this place. Remember also to welcome others. 
guests, friends, family, neighbors, and colleagues. There is a place here for all. Please greet those around you as our children come forward. that it's now officially fall? Yeah. Kind of, yes? Your birthday? It is the 24th. Yes, we are in the season of fall. That's right, yesterday was the very first day of fall. Have you ever experienced when you felt just too small to make a big difference? Do you know what that feels like, to feel too small to make a big difference? Some of you, not all of you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that many of us go through, even adults sometimes feel too small to make a big difference. This morning, I brought a story that I wanted to share with you. It's called, Because of You. Each time a child is born, the world changes. When you were born, there was a new person for your family to love and care for. And because of you, there is one more person who can love and care for others. Because of you, there is one more person who will grow and learn and one more person who can teach others. Because of you, there is one more person to share with, and there is one more person who can share feelings and ideas, as well as things. Because of you, there is one more person who needs help, and one more person who can help others. When you help, care, share, and listen, you are being kind. When two people help, care, share, and listen to each other, they are friends. When people from different countries help, care, share, and listen to one another, it's called peace, a community, peace. That's right. Even something as big and important as peace begins with something small and precious. It might begin because of you. Did you like the story? What's the message of the story? Yeah. That's right, even if you're small or tall, you can still make a big difference to help the world. Anything else? That pretty much summarized it? That's, that's right. That's what the story is about. I love this story because it does remind us that even if we're small, even if it's just us helping and caring and sharing and listening, we can make a big difference in our world. Even big things like peace have very small beginnings. So I invite you to keep that in mind as you go through your week. Even big things like peace have very small beginnings. Let's share a prayer together. Why don't you repeat after me? Dear God, help us remember that no matter how young or how small we are, we have a part to play in making big change in making peace. Amen. Thank you so much for coming this morning. You can head to your church school classes.
As we prepare now for a time of prayer, we remember Alice Johnson recovering in the hospital. We remember also the family of Bob Dell as they prepare to celebrate his life on Wednesday. Let us be together in a spirit of prayer. In gratitude, we pause this day to give thanks for food that sustains us, homes that shelter us, work that engages us, families and friends that encourage us, and a community of faith that challenges and upholds us. We acknowledge, God, that ours is no perfect world and that there is no such thing as a perfect faith community. While we know that religious movements often begin as paths to liberation, we also know that religious institutions often become guardians of oppression. The drift towards dogma and creed, the desire for certainty and permanence, can bring out the worst in us and stifle our humanity. We remind ourselves today that our religious traditions, activities, and languages are metaphors meant to help us learn and practice our faith, but can never themselves become substitutes for justice, compassion, and love. With gratitude and with resolve, may we recommit ourselves this day to a life-giving faith and lives of faith in action. Amen. Good morning. I would like to thank, of course, Reverend Dr. Brandon, Robin, and the entire congregation for the opportunity to speak with you to all today. When I look out at this congregation and I see so many familiar faces, it's because you all have taken action um, within our organization in some way. If you'd be willing um, or able, if you would stand, if you are a volunteer at the Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry, I've already seen lots of familiar faces. I see some shy people. <laughs> thank you, there we go. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> um, so many are, these are not just people that even have come once but are there week after week, whether that's part of your small group that comes and restocks shelves or some people that work registration or a variety of things. And of course, this congregation's been so incredible in supporting us each month with a contribution. Um, that is, makes a huge positive impact in our community. And I just wanna spend the first moment in complete gratitude of how you are walking your faith and living your faith. So thank you on our behalf. Um, I'm here today because September is Hunger Action Month, and it's where we spend time this month doing advocacy work and inspiring community members to take action to end local hunger. It's a nationwide month um, started by Feeding America, but I like to keep it local for now. Um, in case you don't know, in the last year, the Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry saw an astounding 63% increase in the number of people coming to receive food. Last month alone, we fed over 17,000 individuals. But these aren't just numbers. Uh, they represent people, your neighbor, a family member, perhaps someone in a pew next to you. Food insecurity doesn't discriminate, as we all know, and it's a battle we wage every single week at the food pantry. In the Gospel of Matthew, we are told, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. These words are not mere suggestions. They are a divine commandment to alleviate the suffering of our fellow men and women. The Gospel of Matthew also states, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. 
Let us remember that while one of us suffers, we all suffer. As a community, all we have is each other. Let us never become complacent when even one member of com community goes unhoused, one child goes without a meal, or one senior goes without medical care. I believe you all know that the food pantry provides food to those who are struggling, of course, but I'm not sure you know what that truly might look like. Here's what we're doing at the Aurora Food Pantry. Of course, just like here, everyone is welcome. But our work is centered around the most vulnerable in our community, meaning if we value and try to make sure that we are accessible to the most vulnerable in our community, everyone else should be taken care of as well. No one is ever turned away. We are currently serving more than 1,200 families every week, according to our August numbers, um, through our regular Monday, Tuesday, Thursday distributions. These distributions happen three times a week um, and one evening a month. The average family receives the equi equivalent of $280 worth of groceries. We deliver to over 150 households every week to seniors, those who are disabled or those who lack transportation to access the food pantry. We have a pantry at Jefferson Middle School to ensure students have meals and snacks during the day, but also that their family has food to eat over the weekend and long school breaks. The pantry hosts mobile pantries throughout the community, a pet pantry every month for those who cannot afford food for their furry family members, um, or scaly, as we talked about already. Um, new to the pantry is a community clothing closet, offering free clothing those, to those in need, and a community library. We believe education is powerful also, and that people should have free access to that. We have an emergency food box program called Text for Food, in which neighbors who may not be acquainted with us can text food to a number and receive an emergency food box to their doorstep. And each week we do outreach, ensuring our unhoused neighbors have food, clothes, and other essentials. We have been working in this community to end local hunger for over 42 years, and we haven't quite been successful yet. <laughs> In the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German Luther pastor and martyr, we are not a simply bandage, we, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are able to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. We at the Aurora Food Pantry are trying not to just be a bandage, but to actually end local hunger. And a, as a part of that effort, last year we began Project Support. This program is a bilingual case management program in which we look at the root causes of our neighbors' food insecu insecurity and the root causes of poverty. Collaboratively, we work with each neighbor to come up with goals and we work to achieve them together. This could be housing, one of the biggest struggles amongst the people we serve, access to living wage jobs, health care, transportation, mental health care, financial assistance, education, legal aid, and so much more. Because of the work we are doing through projects for support, we have learned so much about the people we ser have served and have worked to design programs that do more than bandage a problem, but start to work to uh, undo systemic burdens and generational traumas. Here's the help we've been able to provide to our neighbors, thanks to not just us, but community members like you coming together to ensure needs are met. We helped a family who was living with their baby in a car after an eviction. Mom had complications after childbirth resulting in crippling medical debt, and the dad missed too much work while trying to care for his sick wife and newborn and lost his job. Through mutual aid, we were able to raise funds to get them into an apartment and find dad new employment. We helped an unhoused neighbor join a paid training program to build his skills and enter the workforce. We helped a mom safely flee with her child from a domestic violence situation at home. We helped a neighbor recently released from jail obtain life-saving seizure medication that he wasn't uh, provided while incarcerated, suffering multiple debilitating seizures. We set up, up, up with SNAP benefits and assisted with his disability application. He is ever since being released from prison seizure-free. We helped a neighbor enter a treatment facility and celebrated with him as he was 30 days sober. We helped a woman from Honduras receive a U visa after being assaulted by her partner. We made over 1,500 sandwiches for the community fridge. We helped an unhoused woman with emphysema obtain a battery to run her oxygen tank while sleeping at night in a tent. We distributed Narcan, helping to prevent two overdoses in our community so far. 
These are just a tiny glimpse at what we've done in the past few months at the pantry through project support and through support of people like you. This is obviously beyond giving food each week, but these are the things we can't do alone. It takes people like you to help us, help us fulfill the mounting needs and really crisis in our community. It is hard, frustrating, and sometimes very slow work, but we will continue to do our best to break down all barriers to access to life-affirming resources to those that we call neighbors. So many of the causes of hunger are systemic issues. I love Aurora. I love our community. I used to be quite frustrated by the fact there seemed to be no safety net for our most vulnerable here. There are so many outstanding nonprofits and religious organizations doing incredible work, yet so many are still left behind. But what I've come to realize is that we are the safety net until systemic policy changes are made. Not the Aurora Food Pantry alone, but the entire Aurora community must step up and be that safety net. As we gather here today, let us recommit ourselves to the teachings of faith and to the well-being of our community. Let us take uh, concrete steps. They may only be small to begin with, and that's okay. But let us take those steps to address the issue of food insecurity, knowing that our actions do make impact. Let you be inspired the words, uh, by the words of Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the, uh, yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. May we be the hands, the feet, the eyes, and the heart of Christ in our community working tirelessly to end food insecurity and bring hope to those in need. If you have an able body, please volunteer. If you have time, please organize a neighborhood food or diaper drive. If you have money, please donate. You can become a monthly donor and feed a child in our community for as little as $14 a month. If you have talent, help us fill a gap in knowledge and assist with data analysis, graphic design, or more. If you have a deep love for our community, share our requests for help. Share our social media posts and emails. Tell those in need that we are here for them. Write your elected officials and demand that legislation be created to help all of us thrive in our community. Please be an advocate for the least amongst us. Mr. Bonhoeffer, who I mentioned earlier, compels us with the ultimate test of a moral society is what it does for the weakest and most vulnerable among us. As John 13, uh, 17 says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. <laughs> Thank you for all that this congregation already does, for your commitment to your community that I know is deep, for your love of your neighbors, even the most vulnerable amongst them. Um, I am so grateful for the impact that you already make. May God bless us and you in those efforts to make a difference in the lives of others. Thank you.
Hear now a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 20th chapter. And Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only but an hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Here ends the reading. I wonder, did you all hear about the new restaurant that's opening in downtown Aurora? I think it's called Karma. There will be no menus at Karma. You will be served exactly what you deserve. <laughs> if I were to describe this teaching of Jesus in a short phrase, I'd simply describe it as the opposite of Karma. What goes around does not come around. The highly motivated day laborers that started work at the crack of dawn and put in a grueling 12 hours in the heat and sun earned exactly the same as the slackers who showed up just an hour before quitting time. One denarius, barely enough to feed their families for another day with nothing left over. Sure, they'd agreed to the wage at the start of the day, but that was before the landowner hired more workers at nine and noon and three and five, before he ordered that the last to arrive be paid first, before he made a show of giving them a full day's wage, and before he proceeded to pay the dawn hires the exact same. Understandably, I think that first group felt miffed, and they told the landowner as much. I'm guessing that his response of, friend, it's my money, so I can do as I like, would do little to assuage their feelings of resentment. But Jesus told his hearers that this is what the realm of heaven looks like. How does that strike you? Chances are, it doesn't sit particularly well with most of us. The landowner's actions fly in the face of the great Protestant work ethic so deeply ingrained in most of us and challenge our very sense of justice. It simply isn't fair. If you have children, particularly if you have more than one child, you've likely heard these words before. We're used to kids hollering out, no fair, or it just isn't fair, when they feel slighted 
when their sense of justice is challenged. My own mother used to count our presents to make sure that we all had exactly the same number in order to avoid unpleasantness on Christmas morning. Does this sound familiar to anyone? If we're honest with ourselves, it doesn't stop when we grow up. When our work promotion goes to another person, or we get passed over for a job, or the big box store runs out of that on sale item we're after, or our taxes go up while another brackets go down, or we're diagnosed with a debilitating illness, or we suffer an untimely loss, we're likely to echo the children's words, it just isn't fair. And most likely, it really isn't. It really isn't fair, because life, after all, really isn't fair. I'm guessing that's why this parable of Jesus is one of his less popular ones. Because he teaches that the realm of heaven isn't fair either. The last will be first, and the first will be last. How does that make us feel? In a word, wronged. I'm guessing that most of us feel wronged. When smacked in the face by the simple truth that life isn't actually fair, and apparently neither is the kingdom of heaven, we are faced with a choice. We can get over it, or we can get frustrated by it. It sounds glib, but really it is that simple. We can come to be defined by the wrong that we've experienced. We can get lost in our own righteousness, get stuck in the past by that unfair thing that has happened to us, become paralyzed by the reality that what goes around does not come around or we can simply accept that life isn't fair, that we're not defined by our pain, that dwelling in the past keeps us from living in the present, that we can commit to making a better future from the broken pieces of the past. Life isn't fair. We will all have to do the difficult work of making peace with that. We will all have to do the difficult work of grieving our personal experiences of that unfairness. And we will all have to share in the work of making fairness a hallmark of our homes and our communities and our nation. But we are still faced with the simple truth that life itself isn't fair. In the context of Jesus' parable, I think that's actually good news. There's absolutely no question that as a late afternoon hire, I would be overjoyed at receiving the same wage as those dusk to dawn workers. The realm of heaven apparently isn't fair either, and that's great news for folks who started work late in the day. They didn't get what they deserved. They got so much more. The realm of heaven isn't fair, but for Jesus, the realm of heaven is the world as God wants it to be. A world where everyone is treated the same, despite what they've contributed or have, where everyone is accorded dignity and respect and reward. It's not a world where dignity and respect and reward go only to the ones that deserve them. It's a world where dignity and respect and reward are accorded to everyone. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus teaches the disciples a prayer that we repeat every time we gather together as church. In it, we pray for the coming of God's realm on earth as it is in heaven. Each week, we pray for heaven's realm of dignity and respect 
and reward for everyone, regardless of whether or not it's fair. It's probably best if we come to terms with the fact that life simply isn't fair, and it's never going to be. Instead, we pray for heaven's realm to come to earth. Let's be busy building a world where dignity and respect and reward are freely accorded to all, no matter what. May it be so. Amen.
motivated more by generosity than fairness, we joyfully give these gifts and dedicate ourselves to being as benevolent as we can. In this spirit, may both the gift and the giver be a blessing to those who need it most. Amen. And now, dear friends, let us go forth to be busy, to be busy building the realm of dignity and respect and reward for all. And may the love of God, the friendship of Jesus, and the peace of God's Spirit bless and keep you now and until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>